Hello, Michael here with another RenderMan tutorial. This week we're going to be looking at batch rendering animation. So uh, you can see that I've got an animation happening here. I've got 24 frames of it and I want to get it out of Maya and uh, get it into a video file so everyone can watch it. So uh, this scene is very simple. It's just a um, it's just a three light setup and I've just got my model there and he's all textured and ready to go obviously. And we're going to batch render out um, all 24 frames and I'm going to show you how you can sort of think about some uh, basic optimization and, and sort of predict how long it will take to render your animations uh, based on a few different things. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to go into our render settings, which is this button here. Um, the first thing that we're going to turn on is denoise and that will make sense um, why we do that later on but basically it's going to make our images look better uh, so in sampling for this example i'm going to be using uh, minimum samples of zero which is actually the square root in this example of 32 whatever that is or whatever the nearest nice number to that is uh, something like six or seven or something like that um, and then everything else is the um, default settings just in case you're wondering um, but yeah, so if you just want to follow along and use the same settings that I am, then yes, 0 and 32, leave everything else the same, you're good to go. Next, we want to go to Passes. This is when we're going to decide what our output file is. Um, so you decide your image format here. You can choose any from the list. I'm going to use an OpenEXR because I want it to render out um, as a linear file and then um, convert it down to 8-bit. Uh, that's generally the way you want to work it as well. You will get slightly larger files, but if you're running animation, you want to obviously get the the best image quality you can get. So you don't want to spend an hour rendering an animation to a JPEG and it looks you know garbage because you've got it all down sampled. Um, and then finally, we're going to have a look at our image size. It's going to be HD 540, uh, which is 960 by 540, and if you're happy with all that, the first thing we're going to do to test how long our animation will take uh, or our, our animation will take to render overall is we're going to use the final render button there and we're just going to have a look at what happens in the it previewer. All right, so that has rendered out at five seconds, which is pretty good. Um, and you'll notice it's a little bit noisy on the shoulder and some of the darker side of him, but overall 32 samples isn't too bad for what we're doing here. And because I'm using denoise, uh, even the noisier frames where you can see a lot more of the shadow of that shoulder, that's actually going to be nullified by the denoise uh, feature. And I'll talk a little bit more about denoise in a sec, but um, the main thing to notice is that our render time is five seconds, and if you don't have that uh, visible, the inspector visible, you just uh, press I on the keyboard, and that will make it visible. Or you can go to uh, Window and Inspector. So basically all we're doing is we're multiplying 5 seconds times uh, however many frames you've got. This is going to be a guesstimate because every frame is going to take a slightly different amount of time depending on how much, uh, how many bounces there are in that particular frame, where the lights are, where the camera is, all that sort of thing. But if you're doing something simple like this, it's pretty safe to estimate based on that. So we're looking at 5 seconds times 24 frames, so we're looking at 130 odd frames. Um, which will mean it's going to take about two, two and a half minutes, roughly. So why don't we batch render that out now that we know that what, what that's going to take, about the time it takes to make a cup of tea. So we're not going to batch render out the entire thing just yet, though. We're going to actually just do a batch render, render of the single frame so I can show you what the results are. So to do that, we're going to go up to Render Man and we're going to select Batch Render. Now this render is going to take a little bit longer than it did when we just did it in the it previewer. Um, you can see that it's already over five seconds. That's for two reasons. One of them is because I'm doing screen recording and the second one is because the denoise function is enabled and denoise only works at uh, during a batch render and it does add on some extra time to the end of your render. However, the um, improvement of your render quality far outweighs the uh, increase in time. It would probably like be comparing this render that's currently at 32 samples, it'd be like comparing it to a render that was at say 256. Makes a huge difference using denoise and that's why I recommend using it. So let's have a look at our render now. Um, and you can find your render if you go to your project file. So this is in small robot 
and then you go to your render man folder and it'll be the most recent um, folder that it's created in this so this is at 841 I created this one and we go to images and then you've got two files there the first file is without the denoise on it and the second one is with it on it I'm gonna open both so we can see what they look like okay so I've just opened up the two files that rendered out uh, this first one is the non-filtered the non-denoised image so you can see that we've got that noise on the shoulder that you could see in the preview render that we did uh, before this one and you can see the noise on the uh, shadow side there as well now if I go over to the filtered version you can see that that noise on the shadow side is pretty much completely cleaned up as is the shoulder so denoise makes a huge difference and uh, for about 10 extra seconds uh, of post processing on that file you get a huge improvement in the quality of your render so that's why i recommend using it if you can you can also enable gpu acceleration on it which makes it uh, a little bit quicker i think i found when i was doing a 40 second render uh, it dropped it down to about 28 seconds when I was using my GPU as opposed to my CPU. So if you have a CUDA based GPU, which is uh, generally an NVIDIA card from the last sort of six years, I think, um, you'll be able to enable that. But um, I think I'll do, I'll show how to do that in a separate tutorial about denoising. So back in Maya now, we're going to render out all of our frames. So I'm just gonna jump back to frame one. You don't have to do that, it will do it automatically, but that's fine. Um, so what we wanna do first is go to the common tab. Obviously, if you wanna change your image size, you can do that here, but um, we're just gonna go with HD540. Image format won't make a difference here. Um, frame animation extension so before we had it set to single frame therefore I was only rendering out a single frame if we want it to be an animation we have to have it set to something below basically these two, first two so we're going to use name dot hash which uh, the hash will be replaced by the frame number frame padding means uh, it will make the frame number four digits so the first frame for example uh, will be name dot zero 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 one if you had it set to two the name would be name dot zero one and uh, finally we need to set the frame range so the start frame whatever your start frame is mine's one end frame is 24 and um, then your renderable camera so i'm using the perspective camera if you're using a different camera you want to make sure you've got it set to that as well that's it so um, now i'm going to go up to render man and i'm going to click batch render and i'm going to stop this recording and be back when it's ready to go okay so the render's finished it took four minutes and 48 seconds so that increases uh, basically just because of the denoise feature like i said before but for the result definitely worth it so let's open that up in photoshop now so what we want to do is go file open and then go to your project directory and then go to render man and your most recent um, file and then you'll see that we've got our frames rendered out as like so so we've got the unfiltered ones and then the filtered ones we're going to go with the filtered ones because they look nicer so i'm going to select the first frame and then i'm going to select import image sequence and then open and this was at a rate, uh, I had this animation at 24 frames a second, so I'm gonna set it to 24 and open it up. And then if I just hit space, I can now play through that and it's rendered all the images. Now, um, if you wanted to say, for instance, put another layer in and then use a bucket fill, you would notice that you can't do this because it's set to 32 bit per channel. So if you wanna be able to um, work on it, you'll have to go to image mode um, and then eight bits a channel, and then just click don't merge. All right, so now that's it converted down to eight bit, we'll need to play through it again to render it to RAM. And then if we hit space, we should be able to watch it at real time, which is cool. Then we can add that new layer in again um, and drag it down beneath our video layer. And you'll notice that annoyingly it's done this. So if I just zoom it out, you'll see what it's done. That's fine, we can just move that into position and resize that so that it is the same length as our video file. And then we can just do a black fill behind it and rewind to the beginning, play through, and you can see that we've got our animation. So if you're happy with that, um, you could do anything else that you want. Obviously, you can add uh, 
you know, hue saturation and change the hue of it or do whatever you like. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to go with what we've got. Um, but if we want to save that out, we can go to File and then we go to Export and Render Video. You get some options here, just choose where you want to export it to. I'll select a folder now and um, call it whatever you want it to be called. I'll call this SR Animation. Uh, and then your video format, um, I'm going to use H.264. That is uh, just your basic AVI um, with, a, with a standard encoder on it. Um, preset. I usually just have it set to high quality. Then you've got your resolution, which you can change as well. Make sure you keep your frame rate at the correct frame rate um, and range all frames or a specific frame set if you want to do that. And then just click render and it'll render out the video. So now you'll see that I've got my video there, which I can just open up with VLC and play through. And you can see that that is an animation, just that easy. So yeah, hopefully this was very easy for you to follow. And if you've got some animations that you've rendered out, um, why don't you leave me a comment to the link because I love watching animation. It's one of my favorite things. So uh, yeah, if you found this useful and you've made, managed to render something out, please share a link and I will uh, permit it and uh, just make sure it's safe for work. That's the one thing. Um, otherwise, if you liked the video and you found it helpful, make sure you click the like button so other people can find it on YouTube and about the internet. Otherwise, uh, if you haven't already, make sure you're subscribed because I'm doing a couple of tutorials a week for things like RenderMan and other CG products that you may be interested in as well. Um, also, make sure you are liking the Facebook page, which is brand new. Um, there's only a few of us there at the moment, but that's where I'm posting all sorts of updates. And if you want to chat to me there, that's a really good way to get at me. That's it for now though. Thank you very much for watching and um, happy rendering.